Hi, and welcome to this Majestic Cloud video. My name is Laszlo Bodor, and I will show you today how to import a CSV file from Amazon S3 into Amazon Redshift with a service called AWS Glue, also from Amazon. So, um, we have a CSV file in, S uh, in uh, S3 it's called uh, taxaboss.csv. Uh, it's a simple CSV file. It looks like this. I kept it short so um, we can do it easily. Um, there are only a few lines. Um, this uh, file is um, uploaded into S3, as you can see it here. And uh, the goal is to uh, import it into Redshift with uh, AWS Glue. So let's see how can we do this. I have already uh, uh, launched a Redshift cluster. Uh, I will not show you this because this is basic stuff and you can probably do it alone. Let's go instead into Glue and start uh, this process. So I'm in the AWS Glue console. Uh, the first thing uh, we need to do is that we will create a classifier. Um, you, can, you can click on classifiers, add classifier, and this will be a CSV classifier. Um, we choose the type CSV, uh, and here we can define the options like what's the delimiter, in my case is comma, the quote symbol is double quote, so this is uh, the default stuff. I will change this to uh, heading, so it has uh, the CSV file has headings and we just click on create. The next uh, uh, thing we need to do is to create a crawler for the uh, CSV file that's in S3. So click on add crawler. Uh, this will be the CSV crawler from S3. Um, here we go to the with the default uh, things but we need to add this classifier we created in the previous step so it's added here then click next and um, here leave the default uh, data store uh, we can we need to choose what's the data store it will be here we need to select the s3 file this is my s3 uh, data and click on the this is the taxable data data bucket and the taxable CSV, we select it. So this is the file. Uh, here we don't put anything at the moment. Uh, go next to add an, another data. So here we select no. Then we need to uh, uh, choose an IAM role or create a new IAM role. So uh, here we create the import role uh, it will be automatically created by glue for us. Um, click on next. The frequency on, of uh, this crawler, how often it should run. You can set it on a schedule or you can run it on demand. So I will choose run on demand because I will run it manually. Click next. And now we need to uh, define where the crawler will uh, put the output of uh, of its uh, process. So here we add the new database. The database will be called um, CSV data from S3. Um, we don't enter a location, it will be automatically determined. Click on create. And uh, here we leave all the default options. Click next. This is a confirmation screen and we just click on finish. Okay, so this is the crawler for the CSV data. Uh, data. This crawler will basically go to S3 and identify the structure of, um, uh, of your CSV file and will create uh, a database in the table here uh, with that uh, metadata. Uh, but in order to do this, we need to run the crawler. So I am uh, uh, running it now. Uh, while it runs, I will go to connections. 
and we will need to uh, set up here the connection um, the redshift connection where we will put the data so we will click on add connection connection name will be redshift cluster uh, the database engine will be amazon redshift click on next we will choose our cluster this is my cluster that i have defined it automatically selects the default database and the user i will only need to add my uh, password here click on next finish um, i will uh, click on test connection i will have to choose the role that i've created click on test connection and it will uh, uh, test the connection from my experience this can take a bit of time so we'll not wait for this uh, anyway it will notify us when it, it finished um, so let's look at our crawler our crawler is running it's starting uh, meantime let's go into uh, sql workbench which i use to connect to the redshift cluster and look at our table so this is the table in um, redshift uh, i've created it beforehand and uh, you can see it has uh, only the four columns that i need if we look it has no data whatsoever ah, we received uh, an error I'm not sure why yeah so it was an error uh, some temporary error it, it works uh, i have no items in this table and uh, here will go my data that will be imported with aws glue uh, let's go back to blue um, okay we have the connection which is still uh, still running its test of the connection our crawler is now stopping the csv crawler uh, which run and uh, created the uh, it first created a database csv data from s3 and it should also create a, a table with the metadata yeah so this is a taxable csv yeah so it identified um, uh, our columns uh, you can see item cost tax total and all kinds of properties uh, for this table okay let's go back with our connection our connection is still in progress so i will pause the video a bit until the connection is tested okay so now um, the connection was successfully tested it uh, says that redshift cluster connected successfully um, now what we need to do is define another crawler this crawler will connect to the redshift database and will identify the schema uh, of our, of our table so add crawler this will be the redshift table crawler okay click on next uh, let's see what are the, the options here we leave everything on the default and click on uh, crawler source type data store here we need to choose a jdbc type uh, of um, connection and we choose the connection we defined in the step earlier redshift cluster and here we need to um, uh, put in the table path so basically this is the name of the database in my case it's products db the schema which is public and then the name of the table the taxable csv okay let's confirm this so we are in the uh, database products db the schema is public and the table name is taxable csv so this is right uh, this is the path um, 
you could su substitute this with a, a percent character and uh, it would detect all tables with, uh, within this schema so it's useful to know that so let's go on to the next step uh, we don't add another data store uh, we choose the role that we created and then um, choose the frequency which will be also on demand um, the output will go to another uh, schema database which will be redshift schema for taxable stable for example um, okay let's go on the next step and finish so we have now another crawler which is the redshift table crawler and we will need to run this one also uh, and it runs and it, it detects our uh, table configuration and schema and stuff like that okay so our crawler for redshift runs successfully and uh, it created a table with the information for the redshift schema and now we have the two, two crawlers the redshift crawler and the s3 crawler now we need to go to jobs and create a new job uh, this will be transfer from from s3 to redshift we choose the im role we created here we leave all the default options what uh, it's useful to know here is the advanced properties the job job bookmark if you enable this uh, then if you run the job multiple times uh, it will remember what records uh, um, it transferred already so we'll not transfer it twice um, click on next then we need to choose the data source in this case is the s3 uh, uh, table uh, the destination will be the redshift uh, table okay uh, so you see here it has the schema for the two tables this is the source and this is the target uh, we click on everything is fine but you could change here the types if you want to or add columns we click on save job and edit script uh, it takes us here into this uh, uh, this script where you could uh, add some advanced options like transformations you want to do on the data or stuff like that but in this case we won't do anything we just save the job close it and uh, we will run it so here we select it and run job uh, here are the properties which will leave everything on default and run job so what happens our job uh, is preparing to run uh, from my experience uh, uh, when we have a cold start like in this case where everything is new and uh, our job didn't run before it takes about uh, 10 minutes uh, until AWS spins up the necessary infrastructure to load our uh, data into Redshift even if our table is uh, pretty small and the data is small it still takes about 10 minutes uh, to, to uh, spin up the, the cluster for us to run this job so i will pause the video and uh, resume it when everything uh, uh, is uh, ready and uh, our job starts to run okay so we're back um it took about 10 minutes uh, our, for our uh, import cluster to spin up but uh, the execution time actually was just one minute because we have a very small table so um, if you have like a very very large csv file probably it will take a lot more time than one minute to run and then the 10 minute spin up time justifies uh, somewhat for such a small table it, it's really a long time but let's see if our data really is in here so here uh, we are in the SQL Workbench tool and I will do a refresh on the table and you see that 
the data which we had in the CSV file, it's all here. It was imported by AWS Glue. So let's see here. Here's the yeah the data in the CSV. I have it opened with uh, uh, the spreadsheet uh, software, and uh, yeah, it says that uh, it imported and everything is fine. So this is how you import a CSV file with uh, AWS Glue. As I said earlier, uh, for very small uh, CSV files, it's uh, an overkill to use AWS Glue. You could just use the copy operation in Redshift. Uh, I will do a video on that uh, uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, so this only justifies for like very very large CSV files and also uh, in cases where you need to do also some um, ETL uh, processes on it uh, for example transform data um, you have um, you have here the that script edit script this script which you could uh, actually edit and do some stuff with the data some transformations or add some other stuff to it uh, so there are lots of things that you could do uh, here with the data not just a simple import but i just wanted to show you the basics of uh, how to import the csv and then uh, maybe in a future video we will dive deeper into how you can do transformations here in this script so that's it uh, for the moment i hope you liked this video if you did please subscribe to the channel and uh, i will see you soon in another video about the aws cloud thank you again and have a great day